Hi, in today's time lapse video, you will see a painting that I made of um, a street in London. I just took an image of um, the internet and I tried to recreate the same using watercolors and um, the pen with uh, ink. So, the idea is to chalk out your uh, color blobs. So, initially, the painting might look really strange, but um, slowly you will notice how it comes to life. So what I'm doing currently is chalking out the basic or the biggest shapes that I can notice in the specific colors which is there inside your image and then um, wherever necessary I'm adding a little bit of uh, shading. This is a very soothing watercolor technique. It's uh, meditative and it brings beautiful results in the end because uh, the process is extremely uh, fun. I'm using the Rafael brush in this which is um, a mop brush in this case which is quite good for uh, watercolors and the book that I'm using is by Lilo Roche although it's about 180 or 200 GSM um, it is fine for watercolors as long as you don't use a lot of layers or you don't use a lot of water so for basic light strokes it's it's perfect so once the base layer was done i'm just adding a couple of um, details here and there um, so what's important when you want to do a technique like this is your proportions and drawing Practice your proportions quite well. You can always learn by doing a lot more of these. So don't worry once you start if you feel that the result is not really like the way you expected. It's perfectly fine. The more you practice, the better you would get at it. Once it dries, I'm going to ink it. So today I am um, using a micron pen. You can use also a dip pen for doing the same thing. Micron pens come with a lot of different um, nib sizes from 0 0.01, it can go up to 1. So you'll have a lot of various sizes in between as well. So the difference that I feel with a dip pen and a micron pen is um, definitely the look and the final feel of it with a dip pen it looks more natural there is a very rustic feeling uh, that is attached with it because you don't know how your lines are going to come some of them could be straight it could be thin some of them could be really fat uh, depending on how the ink is stored inside your nib and how much of pressure you're applying with a micron pen it's a little safer you know that it's going to be the same thickness no matter how much pressure you apply yes Sometimes if you apply less pressure, it would be much lighter and a little bit thinner. But otherwise, um, it's, it's pretty predictable of how the result is going to come. So now that I'm chalking out the windows, you can see how um, this is coming to life and you can see that this is a building as opposed to the blob of color which was there in the beginning. This is a very good exercise for perspective study and the fact that you cannot or you don't use a pencil and you can't correct your mistakes um, makes it even more fun. It forces you to make quick decisions on the go and that's something that I really, really enjoy doing. Now my first building is coming to life as well. You can always color over this because these um, micron pens are also waterproof. It's good to use pigment liners or microns which are waterproof for this kind of study. Because once you add in the details, you might want to um, add some more shading in some places or add different colors. So it's a good idea to do that. To have that freedom.
the tiny details are what make your um, painting come to life so if you notice now that we've made three buildings it looks like the beginning of a street it's looking wonderful you can see so many nuances coming in although in the beginning it all looked like blobs of colors and there was absolutely no idea how it's going to look towards the end you can see that once details are added so much more of depth can be seen through them so much more of details it tells a story uh, it tells you what time of the day it is it tells you how many buildings are there where the person is standing and viewing it from hope you had a nice time watching this video thank you